Hey there, welcome to another Permaslug episode. My name is Jonathan, and today we're gonna to be covering my favorite contact form plugin, which is Gravity Forms. Now we're looking at the Gravity Forms 2.5 beta 3. I know that's a mouthful, but ideally what we're gonna see here is pretty close to what you'll see when Gravity Forms 2.5 fully releases. Now the main focus of this update is a big user interface refresh designed to be pretty consistent with Gutenberg. And I know a lot of you probably already have your favorite contact form of choice, so this is not me trying to sell you on the idea that Gravity Forms is the best. It's just the one that I use and have used for a long time. It's got the balance of add-ons, feature set, everything that I need all in one package, and now it got even better in my opinion, thanks to this UI refresh. It needed it, and finally we have it. So first of all, of course, this form screen looks much better than it did before, just a lot more clean. So let's go ahead and create a form so we can kind of dig into it a bit. So we'll just call this form Contact Us. And immediately you'll notice the user interface looks a lot better here. So this is very Gutenberg-esque, which I kind of like. Initially, I wasn't very thrilled with it, but I do actually like it as I've come to appreciate Gutenberg more as well. But the main thing is that you'll notice as soon as you start bringing in a field, you can go ahead and click it like you've always been able to, or you can just drag it in. And now you have a few more options. So you can see there's those handlebars for you to be able to pop these fields wherever you want. So let's go ahead and try to stick one to the right of this field here. And now this may not seem super complex, but in the old form of Gravity Forms, to get two fields side by side like this, you had to add a class of GF left half and GF right half to these fields. And in the back end, you know, in the editor, they were still stacked on top of each other. So it was a bit clunky. And to me, this is just so much better and so much easier. Why this wasn't here for as long as it was, I guess maybe they knew this refresh was coming, but now it's here and it's just so much better. So as an actual demonstration, uh, normally you would have, let's say like a name field. So let's rename this one to name. I'm gonna change this to required. And then what we'll do is back, go back over here to the add fields tab. I'm gonna go add in a phone number and an email field, which I think would be pretty typical of most contact us forms on standard business websites. And all the typical options that you would expect from before are still there. You know, you can set the phone format, set them to required, no duplicates. Every conditional logic piece is all still there. Just has a much more clean interface. So if you remember from before, you had to basically click on a field, but it was all vertical. Of course, they weren't side by side like this. And then the conditional logic all popped up beneath it. There was all kinds of layered drop downs and stuff. And on longer forms, it was just super clunky. So now we have this nice kind of pop out sidebar layout, if you will. That's how I'm explaining how this looks, but uh, the conditional logic is just so much more clean, easier to read, and of course, it's not scrunched to the left half of your screen and stacked vertically. So that's a huge improvement, I think. And then, of course, let's just set this email field to be required as well. And so now we have the beginnings of a basic contact form here. So let's go ahead now and add in like a message field. So we're gonna go back up to the top, pop in paragraph text, and we'll just change the field label here to message. And for the sake of demonstration, you can actually get a four wide layout here. So what you can do is if you go back to add fields, if we bring in one more text element here, you can see you can, you can actually fit four things in a single row like this. And four is the upper limit. Unfortunately, you can't do more right out of the box. Maybe that will come in the future, but at the moment, the documentation specifically does say that four is the limit. Now, one thing I was trying to achieve, which we can see if we can do real quick here, that was a bit clunky was, let's say you wanted like the name field to be bigger than these other two. So, you know, they're not necessarily all the same width. So what I initially tried to do was basically just pull this over and that actually does work as you can see. But then the other thing I tried was basically shrinking these. And then you'll notice there's gonna be, if I can get that little handlebar, um, there's this extra space over here. And so I tried to take this and drag it over but you'll notice that doesn't work. So perhaps that's something they can work on in a future update, but more or less the solution to that particular problem is, gosh, that's a little bit clunky. I'm glad you guys are seeing this in real time. This is not me editing out mistakes. Um, the handlebars are a little bit clunky, but at least there, that's actually what I wanted where the name field is bigger than these other two. And I simply achieved that by modifying the actual field when everything was equal width. So just a little caveat for you to keep in mind there. Now, in terms of the actual fields that exist in the Gravity Forms, there's really nothing new. I mean, everything that I ever needed was there anyway from before, so that's not anything negative to me. Just quickly scroll through this stuff so you guys can see that. But now what I wanna do is update this form, and then let's go take a look at some of the settings here. So first of all, this settings dropdown does look a heck of a lot better. It was really confusing from before, like what form you were going to and what you know 
settings and notifications and stuff you're going to, but this is just a lot more clean. So if we take a look at the notifications, once again, the user interface is just much more clean. Still feels very familiar. Like immediately I already know what I'm doing here because this is essentially exactly what it was set up as before, just with this nice reskinned layout. So I do appreciate this quite a bit. Now your kind of dynamic data options are still here and available. This I imagine will probably use a little bit of you know, extra work before they get that there. I would imagine they don't want these bullet points there, but once again, everything just looks nice and clean and works pretty much identically to how it did before. These other sections of your form settings all look very similar, just with that same reskin layout. It is a little bit more compact here in the confirmation section, which I think is kind of a welcome change. And then taking a look at the form settings, this once again, pretty much the same thing. So in terms of this being like a super detailed walkthrough on how to set up a gravity forms, that's not what I intended for this to be. It's just so you can kind of see what that looks like. The other thing I wanted to do just quickly was show you what the forms look like in Oxygen Builder so you can get a sense for how the design we just set up with that multi-column layout translates to the front end. And in fact, it actually does work really well. So this form ID is two. So we'll just keep that in mind as we go add it to our Oxygen page. All right, so I've gone ahead and added a shortcode element here and the gravity form shortcode is super simple. It's just gravity forms ID equals two. You can have the operator of title, then description is the other one. So I'm gonna do false on that and then false and then Ajax equals true and then just add that closing bracket and there you go. So by default, it has some pretty plain looking styles, but thankfully the layout that we set up in the back end does translate nicely to the front end. I've also shared this CSS code that I kind of molded together in the past for Gravity Forms. So I am interested to see how this works on the new version. So what I'm gonna do is switch back over here to Oxygen go to my code block and pop in this CSS here. And it actually looks like it does work mostly fine. So that's really exciting that your CSS is not going to be affected for the most part. Looks like the phone number and the email field are not applied on the back end, but let's take a look on the front end real quick and see how that appears. So it looks like this phone field type is set to tell now. So we need to add some CSS for that. And then I have to imagine the other one here is just email. So yeah, type email. So that's a pretty easy fix in the CSS. We can switch over to oxygen real quick here go back to our code block and in the CSS, we could essentially just take this section right here and just add type equals tell like that, close that out. And there we go. Now you can see it applies to our phone. And then the other one was just type equals email, close that out and there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this PHP. And then if we save and take a look on the front end, now our form looks perfectly reasonable. So pretty simple. We don't have the box shadow, but I'm sure that's just another CSS tweak that I need to make, which I will gladly do and put the link in the description below. So as I mentioned again, this is not supposed to be a demonstration of how to configure Gravity Forms to be the best thing in the world, but more supposed to be just a demonstration of what version 2.5 looks like. And hopefully you're excited about it because I think it's a huge usability improvement. And because almost every single site I build has Gravity Forms incorporated in it, I think it's a welcome change. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.